Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Daniel Jebaraj. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Robert. Happy to be here. Daniel is from SyncFusion, and today we're going to talk about SyncFusion and the controls and components and some other things that you offer for developers. Um, Visual Studio has a long history of working very closely with partners such as yourself and providing these additional tools for Visual Studio. And since this show is Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to talk about the tools that you guys provide for developers. Great. Thank you, Robert. Uh, for 17 years, uh, Syncfusion has done really one thing. It's uh, providing tools uh, for the Visual Studio and the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, our customers um, build um, enterprise applications, and mm -hmm. our goal is to really make the enterprise applications awesome and to be able to build those um, applications in lesser time and using fewer resources. So that's really what we've done. Today, uh, we have about 800 different controls on uh, 10 different platforms. Uh, we uh, support Windows Forms, uh, WPF, uh, all the JavaScript variants. Uh, we do ASP.NET Web Forms. We do ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET MVC, standalone JavaScript. And, and so forth. Uh, we UWP, have Xamarin, you name the it. The whole uh, nine there. yards, right. basically. Uh, the last few years, uh, a lot of excitement has been around the Xamarin platform, though. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be really um, focused on Xamarin for the demo portion of my um, uh, talk uh, or of the show today. Um, with Xamarin, uh, the real cool thing is that uh, a lot of our customers um, have tremendous assets um, on the Microsoft platform, uh, C Sharp, and uh, you know, Windows, going back to the Windows Forms days and even mm -hmm. earlier, and they're very excited to be able to trans take those assets and then make them available on mobile devices. Um, and that's that's the real big challenge that they've been facing uh, for the past yeah. few years, and, and Xamarin really takes that a step and, forward. And anytime something new is is invented, and we saw this with WPF, we saw it with Silverlight, we saw it with Windows 8, Windows 10, we you know new platforms come along and everybody wants to know, where's the data grid? Where's the tree view? Where's this control? Where's that control? Where's the PDF viewer? And we don't build all of those things. Sometimes they're part of what we supply, but it's nice for us to be able to say, well, <laughs> there's Sync Fusion. There's, you know, others, we'll talk about them later, but there's Sync Fusion. You should go and see about there because their data grid's pretty good. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's so definitely like in, you know in the Xamarin spaces you're moving over to Xamarin, learning uh, a new variant of XAML, and and you know asking yourself what controls are out there. Um, you guys can help fill that gap. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was talking with the development manager at a financial institution a few years ago, and this was right around the time Xamarin was uh, coming to the fore. And he said, you know, uh, most of our business still runs on desktop, um, mm -hmm. on the Microsoft desktop prominently. And but they, they don't keep me up at night. Um, and those things work and they, you know, they work well. Uh, what keeps me up at night is emails from uh, senior folks asking for that functionality to be available on mobile devices. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's really what they were dealing with back then. And they had to deal with iOS uh, separately, uh, writing uh, with Objective-C and then with Java and uh, you know, managing the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And now uh, with Xamarin, uh, especially with uh, the kinds of controls that we have available on the platform, it just makes it very easy okay. to Let's take see your some data application. So I'm going to start with a, a simple uh, kind of uh, getting started application. I'm going to show a chart, um, just show how easy it is to kind of go to NuGet, uh, get the assemblies and, and get started. And then uh, once that's done, uh, then we'll look at a uh, few other um, demos, basically. So um, I'm just going to create a new project in Visual Studio 2017. Uh, just going to call it very creatively chart sample. I'm just going to choose the defaults except um, blank. Okay, and this spins up. It actually, uh, I've noticed that Xamarin Forms uh, project creation is dramatically faster than it used to be with the latest version. So it is. That's uh, good since we <laughs> stood here and watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Visual Studio 2017 uh, certainly much more tightly integrated with Xamarin. 
I'm just going to get uh, syncfusion.xamarin.sf chart. So, so that's, that's the package, package I'm um, okay. getting from NuGet. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm just pulling it out using the command so line. So did you have to have a subscription or purchase any product to be able to use that? No. Uh, the We published the packages to NuGet uh, okay. by default. Uh, they're subject to the same license. It's a okay. commercial license. But uh, we uh, typically have a 30-day evaluation period. So you can go out and get them and then work with them. Uh, we also have a community license, which I'll talk about at okay. the end, uh, which, which makes it available to a broader audience, basically. Okay. So that's there. Um, it's added the references, and that's really all we need. Um, I'm going to go to the core uh, chart sample, and then I'm going to add an existing item because I uh, want to bring in a simple uh, view model that I'm going to consume in this. So I'm just going to go up a little bit here to this folder. I have that um, saved here. Okay. So I'm just going to explain this uh, real quick. Uh, I have a, a really simple view model. Okay. I just have two mm -hmm. data points. I have a category and sales. And this is a plain old CLR object, so there's no mandate right. on you need to have a certain interface or anything implemented. There's nothing there. Um, it's just a category string and then sales information. And then I have uh, the actual view model has two uh, observable collections, uh, which are um, of type data model. And uh, the first one is, uh, you can think of it as information for the northern part and then uh, the information for the southern part. Okay. And we're going to label that as such in the chart. Uh, just have four data points, uh, books and movies, games, music, mm -hmm. and uh, expose that as bar data one and bar data two. Mm -hmm. That's really all there is in the, um, in the view model. Okay. I'm going to open the XAML file uh, now, mainpage.xaml. I'm going to clear out the default label uh, that the um, project template added for us. And then I'm going to copy paste some code. I'm just going to bring in a reference to uh, uh, the chart, just uh, scoping it to the CLR namespace Syncfusion SF chart, mm -hmm. Windows, I mean, uh, forms, Xamarin forms. So that brings it in there. And then I'm going to copy this code here, which I'll explain in a minute. So uh, just looking at the code here that we brought in, um, I have uh, um, the SF chart control. Um, and uh, the first thing that we do is set up a title for the chart. So we just have a chart title, and then we set its text to be sales by category for north and south. Mm -hmm. I set a font size. And then I set the binding context to bring in the view model, to actually bind it to the view model. And then I have uh, a notion of a primary axis and a secondary axis. Uh, we'll look at more samples, which are uh, which have multiple secondary axes and so forth. But in this instance, I just have one primary axis and one secondary axis. Um, this particular instance, I'm choosing a category axis um, for the x axis uh, mm -hmm. because I don't, I have uh, labels um, for the x values. Uh, I don't have numerical data. And then the secondary axis is uh, numerical information. So I chose a numerical axis. And then uh, there are some settings for controlling major grid lines, minor grid lines, uh, displaying tick marks and so forth. Uh, very easy to make those changes uh, depending on how you want the UI uh, to look. And then um, I uh, have a legend that I've added in here. Um, the legend allows uh, a setting which uh, lets the user control visibility of a series. Uh, so if you have a multiple uh, uh, series and you want to toggle them on and off, you can do that. I'm moving it to the position um, at the bottom of mm -hmm. the uh, uh, screen. And then some settings on icon widths and so forth, basically. Then the next one that's interesting is the color model. Um, the color model is simply the colors that the chart cycles through uh, as it displays. Um, I have it set to Metro. Uh, we have other uh, themes such as material, and uh, you can set up your own. And you could create um, your own if you, you had those type of skills and time to do it. <laughs> you can create your own okay. palette uh, and, and consume that as well, um, if you're corporate colors, uh, for instance. And then the interesting part is the chart series, basically. The chart series is a collection. And uh, you have uh, two series here uh, reflecting the two uh, sets of data points mm -hmm. that we have in the view model. And it's straightforward binding. Um, I set the item source for each of them. Um, I configure each to be a bar series. Um, if you had a line or um, other things, uh, then you would um, choose an appropriately typed uh, series. Uh, but in this case, both are going to be bar. And I just do the binding to bar data one. Um, the two other pieces of information that it needs, uh, one uh, is the um, X binding path, uh, what is the X uh, value bound to, and what is the Y value bound to. Okay. In this case, I only have one Y value. Uh, for certain charts, I will have multiple Y values, and we'll look at that as well. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I, I set that up, and uh, I set the legend icon uh, for uh, displaying in a legend to be a circle for both. And I also enable animation um, to mm -hmm. um, uh, kind of display it when, when the chart comes up. 
So I should be ready to build. You're running this on your Android tablet. I have an Android tablet uh, and uh, have it uh, um, configured, connected. And you're uh, using Visor. I'm using show? Visor, um, I love Visor for the demo. So we use Visor for a lot of our yeah. um, development. It's uh, fast. So that XAML is pretty straightforward. It's not terribly complicated. No, uh, it's there. it's not. And uh, while it's actually loading, um, I'm actually going to show you. Um, how you can actually go to the site and, uh, um, okay. and download the controls. Because if you go to the site, if you go to syncfusion.com and uh, you look at the um, Xamarin uh, platform, um, and you can download by any platform or a combination of the whole thing as well. Mm -hmm. So it'll just load uh, um, and give you an option to look at samples. Ah. The samples are published on both the um, um, Apple uh, iOS uh, platform and also on the Google Play Store. Mm -hmm. You can get them from there. Or you can choose to download the free trial um, the difference between this and getting it from NuGet is uh, with this option, we give you the whole package. It uh, comes with a lot of samples, basically. So you get the code for the samples, and you can make changes and play around with it on your machine. Okay. Um, and uh, that's that's the experience that you get. Make and you sure can we sign talk in. about these other things, the eBooks and the Metro we Studio. We will be talking about the eBooks and, <laughs> Need uh, to talk and about the Metro <laughs> Studio as okay. well at the end. Um, you can sign them with uh, whatever is your favorite network, LinkedIn, GitHub, uh, Google, mm -hmm. uh, any of those basically. Should be published by now, still going on. And uh, I also have, uh, um, let me quickly show the help files that we have available. So complete help is available online. So you can go to help.syncfusion.com and uh, look at Xamarin, for example, Xamarin Forms. Mm -hmm. And the exact steps that I followed now for the chart, uh, you can go to the SF uh, chart control. And there's usually a getting started section, which walks you through everything, uh, adding the chart references, setting them up in new, from NuGet, um, all of that stuff. So this is done, and it's available now. So that's the there chart we um, that we got um, with a few minutes of work. And, and, and the cool thing is that uh, you, uh, you have a chart like this, um, and uh, it's very easy to kind of set up and consume. Um, but I'm going to switch to the demo now. The uh, demo section, um, before that, let me actually show the UWP version of that um, just real quick. So I'll switch to. So it support, we support iOS and we mm -hmm. support UWP as well. So exact same code. Uh, I didn't do anything um, extra, basically. I'm just going to simply set this up as a startup project. And uh, it switches to UWP. I'm just going to build it and deploy it on UWP. And when that's happening, I'm just going to switch over to my mobile device and uh, start the sample browser where I'm going to show the samples. So if you, uh, the UWP sample uh, with the exact same code that we mm -hmm. did for the uh, Android version. So this is all Xamarin Forms. Uh, so you're writing the code only once, uh, both the business layer and the uh, UI. Yep. You're not write, writing anything extra for this. So everything is just done once, and then you can deploy it to the other platforms as well. OK, so now I'm, uh, I'm running the uh, sample browser experience. So if you install the product uh, from the full download, uh, not from the NuGet package, um, then we install a full sample browser. Um, okay. And I'm going to walk through some samples uh, that I find interesting. Um, and the cool thing is that uh, the experience that you get with the sample browser, uh, we try to replicate that across all the different platforms. Uh, so if you are, you may not be interested in Xamarin, but you may be interested in WPF or the JavaScript uh, products, right. and you get a very similar kind of experience with, with each of these, basically. So I'm going to go to the chart because we looked at it already, um, and uh, I'm going to minimize uh, uh, Visual Studio. And uh, if you look at the, uh, we have about 30 different chart types. And each of, each of those chart types is represented with a sample. This is a line chart, and uh, this is a step line and a bar chart. The bar chart was the one that we looked at, mm -hmm. uh, which is created. Let's actually look at, uh, uh, for example, an area or a spline, um, and, and look at how the code looks, uh, um, how it's different from uh, the bar. You'll see that really not much of a difference between those two. Uh, so this is a spline chart. Um, I will just quickly drill in and look at the code for that. So it's set up exactly the same way. Um, it's not very different. Uh, you have a primary axis. You have a binding context. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just got a different view model. And then you have the legend and then the series. Um, the only difference is that instead of a bar series, you have a spline series, basically. Right. And then you configure it uh, with uh, the settings that you want. And then um, you have it uh, uh, working, basically. 
So it's very straightforward to work with a chart. And this is true for any of the chart types. Uh, so you're looking at step area or you know, all of these uh, that are um, more, uh, um, let me look at something with uh, multiple data points. Uh, so I just want to bring up a, So this is a hope and high, uh, low close mm, uh, okay. chart. And uh, if you yeah. look at it, the only uh, real difference here in configuring that is uh, that you have multiple data points, basically. And that's really all there is. So if you look at the view model, um, you look at um, each uh, date time, basically. Okay. The date time is on the x-axis. And you have multiple y values, uh, right. one for each of those settings. And you pass that in. Um, but other than that, it's uh, very similar, uh, very simple to uh, configure. It's really no different from um, anything that we saw um, so far, basically. Yep. And then uh, we also have, uh, um, I'm going to look at a few of the features that are of interest. Um, if you look at the um, chart, uh, you have to, it's a little hard to see, but if you, um, actually, it'll help if I have it displayed. Uh, you can see this trackball UI. So as I move along, you can actually see that okay. uh, show up, basically. Yep. So this is uh, even things like this, uh, which uh, would be uh, um, usually a little tricky to uh, do, are pretty straightforward. So I'll actually go to the uh, trackball um, UI, basically, the uh, sample, and show the information um, on setting it up. It's also very, uh, very powerful. Uh, it really builds on the paradigm of using templates. So what you saw there is not pre-configured. It's actually a template. Um, that you can actually design any way you want, basically. So it's uh, it's really uh, uh, the trackball. So it's, but it's still a type of chart. It, it is a yep. it is a type of chart. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just that the trackball is uh, uh, the UI is actually behavior. controlled. You just passed it. Oh, it's right there, basically. So there's the whole thing is uh, controlled by a here. template, and right. uh, you can actually configure it the way you want. Okay. Uh, and, and that's kind of how it's done. Uh, we have support for gradients uh, with colors, so you can mm -hmm. actually make it uh, um, look uh, really nice, uh, depending mm. on the color scheme that you're interested in. Um, the axis um, can be configured to look exactly like you want. Uh, you can shift the crossing points of the axis. Um, you can make it look um, you know, offset to the left or right, or move it mm -hmm. up or down. Uh, do all of those things. Um, annotations are really cool. Uh, you can place them anywhere on the screen. Uh, there's really uh, no restriction. You can have different kinds of shapes. You can put different kinds of markers and so forth. Uh, we have support for live updates. Um, this is a very popular feature uh, for us. So if you have an observable collection and you're pushing data in, um, the chart is optimized for displaying live updates. Uh, so you can actually update that and, and display this in real time. Um, this is just an example of category access and numerical access, which we already saw. Uh, support for built-in logarithmic access. So if you have logarithmic data, you don't actually have to do anything uh, special. Everything kind of works. Okay. Um, the daytime data access is pretty cool uh, because often uh, with business applications, you have a need to visualize uh, daytime data. And if the access doesn't support it out of the box, you have to do a lot of formatting and you have to really uh, play around with the data. But this is actually out of the box. Okay. So right now I'm looking at uh, uh, data that's uh, um, you know displayed uh, with August uh, and September. And that's the every few days you have a data point uh, that's uh, marked on the uh, tick marks, okay. basically. But as I zoom in, you can see that the um, day, daytime access updates itself, basically. Right. And it makes it look um, uh, with, with increasingly smaller intervals of data. And you don't have to do anything um, to achieve that. Uh, you can actually control the, the step sizes that are there, and you can actually control the formatting if you want. Um, but it does all of that for mm -hmm. you, basically, just by incorporating a daytime access. Cool. You want to show us some, some of the other samples? I think we've seen quite a bit about the chart. chart. But there's a whole bunch of other ones in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch to the data grid. Um, this is another one of our popular controls. Uh, so uh, we, when we uh, started out with the data grid, uh, we've done data grids on Windows Forms sure. uh, for many years and WPF also. One of the challenges was taking that uh, a lot of the features uh, and adapting them to use on a mobile device. It's one of our most popular controls now. It's really uh, you know, something that uh, has been adapted very well uh, for this platform. Um, so just in terms of getting started, it's uh, really, it's quite simple uh, to initialize and set up a data grid. Uh, so I'll just show you a, a real quick uh, idea of how this is done. So SF data grid. So I'm going 
we'll look at the getting started sample. So it's uh, we create a grid and then uh, we pretty much just bind it to a, a source of data. So in this mm -hmm. case, I have orders info. Um, you can let it uh, display all the columns itself, uh, but I've, in this particular sample, we have turned off uh, the automatic generation of columns. So you can see that right here, it's set to false. And then we manually initialize all of the columns. Uh, manual initialization will give you more control. You can um, you know, control the display that you want and so forth, but uh, it's, if, you, uh, if you really want to um, let the grid handle that, you can um, let the grid handle that as well. Okay. And then you get the UI that you're seeing here. It's, uh, it's kind of really uh, not much to uh, set it up. It's very simple, point it at a data source, and then provide the data template that you need uh, to, to set it up, and uh, you have it up and running. Right. Uh, it supports sorting. Uh, you can do custom sorting if you want. You uh, plug in a, I sort, so I, I compare it, and then you provide your own sorting, and then grid will pick it up and uh, use it for sorting. Um, there's support for grouping, uh, which uh, you can see here. Uh, these are groups, and okay. then you can actually have uh, summary uh, rows inserted, and those summary rows, uh, we support different kinds of aggregates uh, for the summary rows. Um, in, in this case, it's actually calculating the totals, um, but you can do any kind of aggregate that you want. We provide uh, several aggregates out of the box, um, but you can also uh, write your own aggregate and, mm -hmm. and plug it in, basically. And then uh, resizing is another cool feature. It's, uh, you can actually drag and resize oh. um, right on okay. the mobile device. So this is a very popular uh, feature uh, because it's, you know, screen real estate is constrained and people want to be able to change things uh, right. as they wish. Uh, we have support for unbound columns. Uh, the column highlighted in blue is an unbound column. And it's a formula column, so it's really just computing uh, the value from um, a formula using the other columns, basically. Right. That's a popular feature as well. Um, and uh, we have uh, on mobile devices certain things that are really, uh, you know, uh, you can actually have a subset of your data displayed and then you can have load more items. So I can click that and it'll load items. Mm -hmm. The other paradigm that's quite commonly used is pull down to right. refresh, and yep. we have that built in. And it's just uh, swiping like with uh, Outlook um, on mobile devices, so you can do that, and then um, you know have different verbs, uh, kind of different commands attached to uh, different segments and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, keeping in line with our um, you know um, PDF, Word, Excel products, you can export the data to PDF or you can export it to Excel. I'm going to click on exporting it to Excel. Um, and you don't have to write any code to do this. This is all built in uh, to the grid, and it will uh, run it and, and export it to Excel um, and, and open it in Excel. Cool. Hopefully I clicked that. Maybe I didn't. OK. Um, so that's the, that's the data grid product. Um, the other product I would like to take a little bit of time to show is um, I'm going to come back to some of the other UI controls if we have time. Um, the Excel SIO product is really cool. Uh, now, a lot of uh, business applications, um, um, I mean, the, the uh, lingua um, um, that they talk, uh, the language that they talk is really um, Microsoft Excel mm -hmm. and uh, Microsoft Word sometimes and PDF and PowerPoint. So right. this is the most common uh, form of exchange of data. And uh, what we have done is really built a full-fledged product uh, with a complete object model around all of these formats, basically. So you can take Excel, uh, you can take Word, and uh, right on your mobile device, this is not going back to a server or doing anything. It's just right on your mobile device. So if you have an offline center, you can support that as well. Um, you can process those uh, files. Mm -hmm. uh, you can generate them, basically. And uh, you can pretty much um, do whatever you do on the desktop as well. Um, so I'll show an um, initial, uh, just a quick sample uh, before we uh, start doing, uh, looking at the code. I'm just going to switch to the formula sample, and I'm going to generate an Excel file um, on the mobile device. And it'll uh, generate the file and then kick it off to Excel uh, to open it. So this is a full-fledged table with data, and then you can see that the formulas are properly initialized. And uh, it, it just mm. is really a very rich uh, kind of experience. Mm -hmm. um, there are often cases where um, you export data to CSV files, uh, but that doesn't provide users right. the kind of experience that they uh, want. And this makes it very uh, simple to do this. Um, let me take a minute and show the code for this so we can see how uh, simple it is to do something like this. The product is called XLSIO, and these are the samples. I'm going to look at the formulas page first. 
So uh, this is non-UI, so everything is actually done in code. Um, you can reference it in SAML if you need, but uh, that's um, all of the work is actually done in code. So it's uh, very similar to uh, the um, automation API um, that's available on the desktop, basically. So you can see that we instantiate an Excel engine, and then uh, we ask oh, it. So uh, you're building the spreadsheet in code here. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. Okay. We're building the spreadsheet in code. Right. Um, you can choose to use templates. Uh, we'll look at that also. Um, often, uh, it's kind of cumbersome to build everything that you need uh, from code. Mm -hmm. So you can take a template, and you can plug in everything, kind of like mail merge works. Um, you do all of the work uh, inside uh, Excel. And then you save it as a template. Uh, we can load the template and then um, just plug in the um, unique data. Okay. Um, right. Um, An Excel engine is something that you guys provide, right? Mm -hmm. Excel okay. engine is something that we provide. Yep. And uh, you instantiate that. Uh, and that's really the starting point uh, for the other work. And then you ask it to create a workbook. Um, I'm creating a workbook with one sheet. Do you need here. Excel? installed on the device to create it or only to open it? No, uh, you don't need Excel installed uh, to create it. Uh, if you visualize it right there, um, okay. you will need Excel installed or another variant uh, um, that uh, reads Excel files, basically. Right, but you can create the Excel spreadsheet even if you don't have Excel on the device. That is correct. It's just writing out the file. Right. Okay. It doesn't call into Excel or do right. any kind of automation. Yep. It's, uh, it's just working with the file format, basically, to accomplish this. And then you create the workbook uh, with the worksheets. And then once you have that, uh, then you can access the sheet. Um, and again, an object model is built around that. And uh, um, you can see how it uh, initializes each, each part of the sheet, basically. So there's a full object model around it. You have text, and then uh, you uh, can initialize each of those um, cell references, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's C6 or F6 or whatever, um, to what you, whatever you want it to be. And this is all strongly typed as well. So you can set it to be text, or you can set it to be numbers, you can yep. set it to be date time. Uh, it's very simple to uh, do all of that and to format it. And then uh, the formulas are kind of the interesting part that we uh, do at the end. Uh, so these are actually uh, style settings. Um, so you have full access to that as well. Um, so you can see here that I'm actually setting the cell style yeah, to be a certain taking font. taking me back to my VBA days. Yes. <laughs> 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 the, the API is very, very similar. It's uh, <laughs> meant to really uh, you know, be easy for someone to port over if they're running it on a mobile device or on a server, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the uh, formulas are at the end, basically. So you, uh, you know, provide a formula mm -hmm. and then say, hey, this is where I want the formula to be, and these are the references. It's just you know, it's traditional Excel, right. basically, but in code. Awesome. And that's, that's kind of how you uh, do that. Just one more quick thing with the Excel uh, product. Uh, I want to show the chart page, basically, because that uses a template. And it's interesting use of a template. Um, so. So if you look at it here, um, this is actually loading a template um, from disk. So this is actually saved as a resource uh, oh, file okay. as part of the application, mm -hmm. and then loading it. And once it does it, then the rest of the stuff is the same, basically. So if you uh, look at that code, uh, just charts up here. So the chart was embedded. Uh, the rest of the data yep. was already initialized, basically. Okay. So we did the chart and code. Very cool. So we uh, we have this. Uh, very um, cool. This is for Excel, and uh, and you can do pretty much anything. Uh, there's very little that's uh, not supported. You can do pivot tables. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do spark lines. You can do anything, uh, pretty much. Um, even features that are not uh, supported on the um, the uh, mobile version of Excel, basically, you can still generate them, and then um, right. the visualization will scale up. You can email it um, to a client, and then they yep. will be able to open it on desktop Excel. Um, the Doc.io product is also very similar. Um, I'll just quickly uh, show that code right there. Um, and uh, you can uh, see that it's really uh, you know, similar to what we did with Excel. So you have mm -hmm. a um, Word, and Word document, and then you can create sections, and then you can create paragraphs. Uh, you can do styles. You can insert data. The cool thing is that you can do mail merge with this. Um, that's really a very common use case uh, for a lot of business scenarios. So you have a, a document. <laughs> And then I you guess. can actually do mail merge right mm -hmm. on your mobile device. And, and, uh, well, you it know. just proves the point that a mobile device is a computer. Yeah, right? absolutely. It really is. We call it a phone mm -hmm. because that's the term we use, just as I, you call that your Lenovo or your ThinkPad. I call yeah. mine my Surface. Right. But it's still just a computer. Right. Yeah. Right. And then the phone is becoming more and more powerful. And right. uh, it's, it's really super exciting to see all of these awesome use cases. 
you know, we wouldn't have really imagined this uh, even a few years ago that you yeah. can do all of these things um, that you used to need a desktop for, basically. You don't have to do a call back to a server, nothing. You, you mm -hmm. just have it right there. And it and just makes the whole experience. A lot of these capabilities are, are shared across, whether it's WinForms or WPF or UWP or, or mobile. A lot of similar things would also be in the controls for web and mm -hmm. JavaScript. Yep. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh, that is that is true. Uh, uh, let me actually show, uh, if you go to the website, uh, we looked at the downloading evaluation experience. Um, if you look at the product page here, um, you can yep, see all of the all different are. platforms yep. that are supported and uh, you can actually access any of them uh, right from the site. And then uh, you also have uh, just a f uh, one more thing that I would like to show on the product itself, um, is we have this new uh, JavaScript package uh, called uh, EJ2 that's coming out. And uh, there's a demo that's available. Uh, there's also a, a feed for um, up-to-date versions of uh, mm -hmm. this being published on NPM. Uh, and we have that running on our server. And you can look at the samples. It's really, this is the chart uh, that we looked at uh, here yep. um, on Xamarin. And it's really identical in terms of feature set and sure. functionality and all of that. And you have a data grid and um, pretty much everything else. Well, it's kind of the cool available. thing about uh, you guys' control vendors. You build controls for one platform and then you know, your spec for the next one is basically, okay, it should do this, <laughs> right? Right. right. Add minus the things that don't work on that platform, maybe add a couple things that do, but the bulk of your script is, it should do this. Right. We already know what a grid does, we already know what a chart does, right? right. Just make it work on, on the next platform. Right. Yeah, logical equivalence is really important for us mm -hmm. because we have to take a chart and then, yeah. you know, uh, the implementation languages or platforms are completely different. Uh, right. you know, dealing with Xamarin yep. or WPF. The guts underneath are wildly very different, different, but the basically. way I use it as a, as a developer is much of the object model should be the same, the properties should be as similar as possible so that it, doesn't, it wouldn't take me that long to learn how to build a chart in this if I've done it in, in a different yes. platform. And that's the idea, whether it's JavaScript or right. uh, you know, XAML, you, you have a very similar experience. Yep. The logical parts carry over, basically. Cool. That makes your job easier, and yep. that's, that's the whole. So we'll have in the show notes uh, a pointer to where people can look at all the other samples. Um, let's talk about two of my favorite SyncFusion products of all time, uh, Metro Studio and then the Succinctly series. So uh, with the Succinctly series, I have uh, uh, an announcement that's pretty exciting. So uh, for those of you uh, who haven't come across the Succinctly series before, uh, we are up at 130 plus eBooks now. Um, and uh, we publish these books every uh, um, two weeks, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a title coming out every two weeks. And the cool thing is that um, they're all about 100, 150 pages, uh, nothing more than that. So it's something that you can grab and read um, you know, in a, f a few hours, basically, depending on the complexity of the topic in a few hours. And uh, they're available for um, as a PDF download uh, that you can down read on your iPads or um, desktop. They're also available as a um, Amazon uh, Mobi uh, mm -hmm. file that you can upload to your Kindle and read from there. We also have EPUB now, so you and can they, read And they with really them. are succinct. They're really well written. They're very succinct, <laughs> yes. And I read the Xamarin Forms one on an airplane, and oh my god, it was fantastic. The UWP one's great. I've done the Link one, the Async one, the Git one was awesome. I could go on and on. I love yeah, these things. It's really, uh, I mean, we get... I want um, the ability to just subscribe to them and just get them. I actually don't want to have to go to your website and look to see what they are. I just want them to arrive. Well, That's uh, what I want. We, <laughs> Is we, there we, the ability to have that? We have that now. Uh, it's, uh, it's really not on the Android store, the Play Store yet, but it's on the Apple Store. And this will be on the Android Store in a few days as well. Um, so this is an application oh. that we built with Xamarin also, Xamarin Forms. Um, so this gives you the full oh, uh, list there. And then okay. you can actually say, hey, I want to add this to my shelf. And then it will say, oh, I don't have internet connection on the device. Um, but I have a oh, shelf already okay. configured. Mm -hmm. So I have the, these three books on my shelf. And mm -hmm. I can just read them right here, basically, uh, with the built-in PDF reader. Interesting. Xamarin forms. Okay. And then when you have a new title published, uh, the thing lights up. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little icon on your screen. And then you uh, just go in there and get it. You don't have to go to the site at all. Okay, cool. So you got your <laughs> wish, Robert. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's the cool announcement around the Succinctly series. And then um, also another uh, one of our products uh, that is very popular is the Metro Studio yeah. um, product. So this has been around uh, for many years now, I think about uh, four or five years. Uh, we have over 7,000 icons now, the base icons. Um, but the cool thing is that what, what you can do with it. Um, and you know, 
Um, some developers have really cool design skills, so I don't want to knock everyone. <laughs> <but> <laughs> most of us. For don't. the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of us, uh, who uh, you know need uh, help with that, uh, Metro Studio is really uh, f um, you know very helpful. Um, so you can actually do uh, um, customize icons without having any kind of design skills. So for example, let me say I just want to edit this. I just click on this. And then I can actually change the color. I can do the background shapes. Um, I can say, hey, I want to change the color to be something else. Mm -hmm. um, I want to change the icon to be um, another color. Yep. And I can change the size, uh, do all of that. The cool thing is it not only can export to a raster format, but I can also this export to XAML or SVG. This is the part that was amazingly cool SVG the first time I saw this. Here's the XAML that you can just paste into your app, and there's that control. That icon, excuse me. Yep. That's uh, that's that's very cool, uh, and uh, we, we kind of have. Uh, and what's uh, the licensing around that? Um, it's completely royalty free. I mean, okay. you don't pay us anything. Uh, we take great care to make sure that these are all done by our in-house design team. Mm -hmm. So we're not really licensing it from anyone. Um, so the rights are very broad. You can pretty much do whatever you so want. So I can I can use these in an app that I'm going to put in the store or use myself. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely cool. you can. Yeah. And that's that's precisely why and this a lot of people download it. This is just so much better than finding icons and taking a picture of them and trying to use that <laughs> versus trying to figure out how to do design skills. This yep. is this is one of those things where when you see it it's it's just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people love it and yep. uh, you know, we get a lot of email about our products, but uh, you know we get a lot of email about the succinctly series and mm -hmm. the Metro Studio, uh, which which are uh, really now cool. given that the XAML in WPF is a little bit different than the XAML in UWP, which is a little bit different than the XAML in Xamarin Forms. Is that XAML? Does that apply across all? How do you handle that part well, I'm of it? I'm told that this applies to all the platforms okay. basically. So uh, it applies to UWP and uh, applies to WPF as well. Okay. Basically. So it, it's uh, and supposed to be Xamarin Forms as well. So you can Xamarin Forms also. Okay. Yes. So you could just take that XAML, put it anywhere, and they work across. It all should the work across okay. the board. Uh, with uh, uh, with Xamarin Forms, you might need a little bit more uh, tweaking. Um, we also have a SVG option, basically, that's okay. more commonly supported on uh, mobile devices. So okay. you can go that route okay. also, basically. Cool. So that's, that's Metro Studio. Um, you can also, uh, the, the other cool thing is you can select any number of these and then just drag them here and create a project. Mm -hmm. And you can edit them all as one, basically. Okay. And then save it out uh, and, and get a whole uh, portfolio of um, icons that you can right. consume then in your application. Awesome. Great. This oh. is great stuff. Thanks, Robert. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quick look, relatively quick look at all the things Syncfusion uh, provides. We could, we could spend all day looking at various controls. <laughs> and we, we, we picked a few of your favorites. That's cool. Definitely check this stuff out. Check out the controls. Check out the Succinctly series. Uh, check out Metro Studio if you need icons. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me, Robert. It was really nice. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank you.